welcome back to more Football Friday. Time now for the Alliance National Bank highlights. Joined now by Jeremy Babin. JB, how you doing? Terrific. How you guys doing? Good to be here again. As it always. is great to be here, and a lot of people always tune into this portion of the show to see the highlights. So all take right. it away, man. Thank you. They're the best team we've seen all season. That's what Dalton head coach Adam Weingard said about Sequoia, their matchup tonight. Now, the last time Dalton and Sequoia played was back in 2001 when Dalton won 21-14. to Dalton's coming off a pretty impressive win, beating Woodland, a talented team, last week at home. But could they handle the Road Warriors that they were facing in Sequoia? Well, let's head out to Sequoia right now and see how that game went. And we'll pick things up in the first quarter with Sequoia with it near the end zone. Ben Rogers with a quarterback sneak up the middle. 7-0 Sequoia. But here comes Dalton. Shaquan Moore, give me some more of that. He runs it in up the middle. Tie things up. 7-7 seven, seven, Dalton. But here come the Chiefs. Brett Snyder sets up from 25 yards. That's good for three. 10-7 Sequoia. More Chiefs. Dominic Swoop runs it 35 yards into the end zone. Look at this. Stiffing arming his defender. 17-7 Sequoia. They go up 10 in the first half. Snyder back for three more. This good from 20 yards out. 20 to 7 Sequoia and the Chiefs again. Dominic Swoop up the middle. 28 7 Sequoia. Sequoia goes on to win 38 to 14. Northwest playing against Cass tonight. Now, Northwest has owned Cass in their history, a 4 0 mark all time. And so far for Northwest, they've been led by their quarterback, Dean Haynes, who has 62 points to lead all of the area in scoring. So, how did Northwest do? Well, you know, it would be a scoring shootout, but how much? How many points did they score? Let's head right out to Northwest right now and find out for ourselves. A good night to paint your chest. Might be a little chilly, though. And there's Drew Smith getting ready on the sideline early in the first. Chico Chibuye with a long first town run going in for a first, first down for Northwest and later on the same drive, Dean Haynes finds Jordan Darnell on the route. Darnell won't go down. First down for the Bruins at the 30. Then the ball at the seven with first and goal. Dean Haynes keeps it to the to, to a touchdown for Northwest, eight nothing after the two point conversion. And then on Cass's ensuing drive, they're punting and this ball is gonna get blocked. And that's by number three for Northwest. Three guys from Northwest get on it. Ball on the 29 yard line now. Second quarter winding down. Haynes hits Drew Smith. First down at the five yard line. 22 yard pass right there. You just saw it. And then Haynes is going to finish his business. A touchdown for Northwest. Haynes, second touchdown of the night. Puts the Bruins on top 21 0. Northwest scored on that drive to make it 14 0. Now under a minute and a half. Bruins have a chance to score again. Haynes scrambles. This pass is wide open. Wesley Bell. It's dropped. No score there. Halftime. And the crowd, you know, loving the homecoming. Queen Lucy King. Now the Col Colonels. First drive in the third. Romeo Williams gets a gift from Matt Townsend. He knows what to do with it. He goes into the end zone to make Northwest lead 28 to nothing. Northwest, they go on to win 35 to 7. Well, for our next game, it's Ringgold at Southeast. Now, for Ringgold head coach Robert Atkins, he may have not seen week six as it was originally pictured. Of course, losing his starting quarterback, Zach Fairchild, to a torn ACL season-ending injury last summer. Maybe that contributed to the tough start for Ringgold, having only won one game that win coming last week, although they'd have to stop the David Crane fast spread offense tonight. How do they do at Southeast? Let's head out to Raider Field right now and check it out. Southeast, the band getting their groove on. I don't know who that's an impersonation of. That's impressive. First quarter, Ringgold's Martez Eastland. He's getting his groove on. He's in for a touchdown, 7 nothing. Ringgold. Ringgold back with it, but not for very long. They fumble the ball on the handoff. Southeast gets on it, and they recover. We're going Raider right way. They don't score there, but it's Ringgold's Martez Eastland who does. This time he goes 50 yards all the way in. Freezing through his defenders like they're screen doors. Boy, he's big and he's fast. 14-0 Ringgold. Still in the first quarter, Tanner McCutcheon's pass is going to be picked off by Desmond Law. And he's going to be headed into southeast territory before he's finally brushed out of bounds. And it's Ringgold. First down and 10 for them. And that leads to Eastland yet again, this time from 30 yards out. He runs it in to the end zone, puts Ringgold on top 21-0. Look at this. Oh, he is fast. Second quarter, Ringgold's Barrett Johnson 
going to line up and hit a touchdown pass to the tight end, Tyler Hendricks. That would put Ringgold up 28-0. End of the second quarter now, McCutcheon and Southeast trying to get back in it, but this wouldn't help. This pass is picked off by Mark Fairchild, and it is first and 10, Ringgold. Let's head now to the third quarter now, and it's McCutcheon going to get up once again. Wait for it. There you go. Pass picked off by Desmond Law for his second interception of the game. Ringgold, they win this one in convincing fashion, 48 to nothing. Our next game, we go to Calhoun at Gordon Central. Now, for Gordon Central, they lost their first game of the season last week. Now, the Yellow Jackets are coming off a huge 51 to 12 homecoming win over Coosa. So, which team would change momentum as they things would unfold? Well, let's head out to Gordon Central right now and see how everything is going. Coach Hal Lamb and Chad Fisher talking a little pregame, and the mascot was running wild for Calhoun. First quarter, Gordon Central doesn't waste any time. Quarterback Dre Painter finds Kedron Johnson for a touchdown, 7 0 Warriors. And the Yellow Jackets answer quick. Dustin Christian is going to be drags into the end zone, and that would tie up the game at 7. And we have a brand new ball game. Calhoun, they are at it again. Quarterback Michael Johnson hits JT Palmer, and Gordon Central can't make a tackle. First and goal for Calhoun. And then it's Dustin Christian. He gets a handoff. The handoff slurs easy. 14 to 7, Calhoun with the lead. Now, middle of the second quarter, quarterback Michael Johnson to Cody Ralston. 21 to 7, Calhoun. But GC wouldn't give up. Not yet, anyway. Cody Thomas with a catch and the score. This would put Calhoun up on top, or Calhoun would lead at this point 21 to 14. Now, right before the half, Calhoun putting it out of reach. Johnson to Derek Ramsey, who is virtually untouched. 28 to 14, Calhoun. Calhoun, they go on to win this game, 48 to 14. Well, for next game we head to it's LFO at Ridgeland. Now the two and two Ridgeland Panthers were at home tonight against their rival LFO team. Now both teams are coming off big wins. How would LFO do? Well, let's find out how if they could handle the future Alabama wide receiver Michael Bowman. Strike up the bands. First quarter it's LFOs. Cody Commons hits Dominic Turner in the end zone. 7-7 seven, seven is the score. Then it's Ridgeland's Carlin Bowman. This time he's going to drop back to pass, and he'll hit Deontay Marsh. This is going to be good for six points. This is a 50-yard touchdown pass. Puts Ridgeland up 14-7. Now it's LFO's Cody Commons. He drops back to pass, and his pass is picked off. This might be the play of the week. Watch this. Look at this defensive lineman hustle into the end zone for a touchdown. 21-7. to If that doesn't wild up the crowd, I don't know what does. LFO's Cody Comets now. He takes it himself 35 yards in up the middle. And it's a first down for LFO. But Ridgeland's way we go, and it's Carlin Bowman. This to Michael Robertson. Stopped just short of the end zone. Ridgeland, they weren't stopped. They go on to win 28-20. to for the next game and our final game, it's Chattooga at Sonoraville. Now, this was really the tale of opposite ends. For Sonoraville, they are still undefeated. In fact, the only team in Gordon County to be undefeated. Now, for Chattooga, they're coming off a little bit of an interesting situation. Their coach, who was fired after last week, John Starr, after their first loss of the season to um, Armichi, so they're coming, kind of coming off of a tough situation. How would they respond? How would Sonorville respond? Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's head out to Sonorville and see how those two game, that game unfolded. And both teams came out fired up, looking to keep the dream season alive. First quarter, Chattooga gets on the board. Rashad Ramsey finds a way. Touchdown, Chattooga. Chattooga, 7-0. Now, now Chattooga wants more. Nothing here. This is a huge stop by Sonorville's defense. That would end the first quarter. Chattooga sells for a field goal. Big key in the game, 10-0 now at that point. Then later in the second, Sonorville gets moving. Running back Robbie McAfee pounds his way into the two-yard line. Sonorville, they're going to punch it in right there. A quarterback sneak by YJ Glover, and Sonorville is on the board. 10-8 after the two-pointer. But Chattooga has an answer. Running back Rashad Ramsey has an arm, and he uses it. Throws a perfect ball to Nick Perry, 17-8. Chattooga, Sonorville. They go on to win 32 to 17. 
And that'll be it for your Alliance National Bank scoreboard or highlight show. But don't go anywhere. There's plenty of more Football Friday right on the other side of the break. So stay right here.